Konnichiwa. Welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm Taylor. And today we are saying sayonara to Japanuary. It is the final day of Japanuary. I hope this month has shown you how interesting Japan trick takers are. They really like cool twists on the genre and have such an innovative feel to them. Today we are going to be covering our final Japanese trick taker. It is Peter's Two Sheepdogs by Shibu. And while it is Japanese, it also is two player only because at the end of Japanuary is Febtuary, our new month of two player only games. So, oh yeah, do you want to hand me the, yeah, I'll come get the, the new sweater for the, yeah, here, one sec. Oh, thanks so much. So, we started Japanuary talking about dogs. And just like how cyclical the Japanese flag circle is, we are ending the month talking about dogs. Because Peter's Two Sheepdogs, you play a sheepdogs herding around animals. And in this two-player game, the hook is you don't technically have cards. There's no cards in this game. The cards are represented by these 3D printed animal little uh, tokens, would you call them? They're 3D printed, so they're kind of plastic. But so there's ones with wolves or sheep. And the other hook is players are playing Mancala as they trick take. So the loser of the trick will actually be playing Mancala with the cards, with those animal tokens. Really cool concept. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how to play. In Peter's Two Sheepdogs, the deck is made up of 28 cards, numbered one through seven, and four suits. These are the livestock animal suits, and these are the wolf suits. The wolves are a little bit different and a bit special, but I'll explain that a little bit later. Here we have a game set up for the only two players. Each player will get a screen to cover up their hand, and then from the bag, all the pieces will be put in, shuffled, and each player will get 11 of them. And then one each will go into the four of the grasslands, and there will be two left in the bag for later. Additionally, you'll have this player's goal fence, and then this player's goal fence. For now, just so we can see everything easier, I'm going to remove these screens. You normally wouldn't do this. Removing the other players as well. This will make it so we can see their hand. Normally you can't see this, but it'll make it easier for when we're playing like this. So there's also helpful player aids for the players. And this is just the rules, but I thought I'd keep it out because you can't see the lid of the box because we're using it. So Peter's Two Cheap Dogs involves Moncala, and trick-taking. How the game starts, though, is it starts with trick-taking. So first player is determined randomly, and let's say it's this red handkerchief dog. So they'll pick one of their cards, one of the animals here, and they'll lead it to the trick. So maybe they lead with a six sheep. It is a must-follow game. So coming to blue handkerchief here, their cards, the cards only have one of the sheep suit, so they have to follow suit and play a sheep. After the trick is played, regardless of the suit, the higher number wins. If there's a tie, it goes to lead player. So there wasn't a tie here, and the seven was the highest. So the blue handkerchief wins the trick. If you win the trick, you take both of the animals played, and you can put them in either both of one of your grasslands, you can split them, or you can put both in the other. You can choose where they go. And why you would want to choose it depends on certain situations in the game, but let's just put those there. The loser of the trick does one of two actions. Which of the two actions you do depends on if you have any animals in your grasslands here. So if you have no animals in the grasslands, you do an action called a welcome back action. Since we do have animals in our grasslands, we're going to actually be doing the chase action. So I'll explain the welcome back action later when that happens. But the chase action involves actually playing Moncala with the pieces. So what the chase action is, is the player who lost will choose one of their grasslands and they'll take all the animals in it, and they'll play Moncala. And they'll go in the direction as this is showing, so counterclockwise. So the choices available to the dog are either taking this one wolf and putting it here, and that would end its round, or taking this one sheep and putting it here, because these spots also are from Moncala. So it's here, 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 and here. If you're doing an action that just ends in a grassland, like this action, it's over. However, if we're winding back here, they were to take this one sheep and they place it into their goal fence, that triggers an additional action. So whenever your last piece, so 
if it was this person's turn, they took these and draw there and there. If whenever you place your last piece in either your goal fence or your opponent's goal fence, you get to do another chase action. So they did their first chase action and put one sheep into their own goal fence. Then they get to do another chase action. Since they have an animal in the grasslands, they can't do the welcome back. They have to do the chase action and they all just do that. It's a little complicated, but essentially you're picking up tokens and kind of moving them around the board until you stop. And so now that that was their final chase action, because they didn't also go into another pen, the loser of the trick is actually the person who leads the next trick. So it's going to be red handkerchief again. So maybe they play this five sheep. Since blue handkerchief doesn't have any sheep, they can play whatever they want. And if they win, so maybe they'll play this seven wolf, they will collect these again. So maybe they'll do that. The loser has to do the chase action. And what they've done is they've forced this player to pick up their, the only animal and place it into the goal fence. So these animals are all the same except for the wolves. The wolves are very special. If the wolves ever go into a goal fence, they either eat an animal there, or if they're the only one going in, so if this was just going into a lone goal fence, they run away. So since the wolf goes into this player's goal fence with an animal there, it actually eats this animal, and it's just out of the game. So just set off to the side, kind of out of the game for the time being. And it comes back in the next hand. And they're not in the barn. The barn is like another special term, which I'll get into later. But those are just kind of set aside. So what's interesting is when they place the one wolf there, they actually triggered a bonus action. So they get to do the losing thing again. And since there's no animals here, they don't chase. They do the welcome back. So what the welcome back is, if they had an animal in here, they can move it from their goal fence into their barn. And what I like to do is just put the barn to the right. And so that helps for scoring, and I'll explain what kind of the barn is. But the barn is kind of safe, of, safe from wolves, and it's a separate thing. However, since they didn't have any animals there, their welcome back action is just kind of wasted. Also, rewinding back, these are the two animals that just got eaten. If it was like this, and they did the chase action, and it came into here, they only remove one. The wolf doesn't eat all the animals. So then that would actually be nice for them, because then when they did the welcome back, this pig would have gone to the barn. But sadly, they had nothing in there. So the welcome back action is just wasted, and it goes back to the trick taking. So Red Dog was the loser of the trick, and maybe they really want to win. They might play this seven pig. And then now, if Blue plays the one pig, they'll lose and they can put their two here. A big Moncala turn works is you get all of the pieces and then clockwise you'd walk around. So they walk around and then they are putting in pieces into their opponent's grasslands. So it's an interesting shift of pieces here. And since they ended on a grassland, they don't get to do another chase action. Then you just do trick taking again. So the loser would lead, maybe a three, Play six, they won, they get to choose where this goes. They'll put two here. They play this again. So they go in there, and then there, and then there. And then you just keep going trick taking because they ended in a grassland. What's interesting though is as you see here, it says sheep count or animal count equals a bonus action. So they give you the number here, and it says two, five, or eight, or one, four, and seven. So this helps because if this is five, what it lets you know is if you were to do the chase action with five here, you'd be able to go one, two, three, four, five. So it lets you know you're going to hit it perfectly to do another action, which is super nice and super helpful. So you would keep going over and over with the tricks. One thing though, and why you were maybe wondering why there's two pieces left in here, if you hit this bonus action three or more times in one turn, so maybe there's a good example in the rule book, but here, so in this example, if they had just lost, they do a chase, hit that, so that triggers again, then they do it with this, and they go here, here, triggers it again, and they do this, triggers it again, so that's three times. So if you ever hit a three times in one 
Moncala round. You reach into the bag and you pull one out and you can put it anywhere. You can put it in your grasslands, their grasslands, your pen, their pen. You just do whatever you want. So, because this could be a wolf, right? And you can put it in their pen and steal an animal from them. So, you just put it in there. It can only happen two times in a hand. So, if you do a third time, there's nothing in here for you to get. But yeah, it's a fun also bonus thing to know about. Jumping forward to right after the fifth trick here, how scoring works in Peter's two sheepdogs is their spring scoring and then summer scoring. So spring scoring happens right after the fifth trick and then summer scoring happens after the 11th trick at the end of the hand. So for scoring, there's four things that you score on. There's livestock animals or wolves in your grasslands, animals in your goal fence, and then animals in your barn. So in your grasslands, every animal that isn't a wolf is worth three points. Every animal that is a wolf is minus three points. So this would just be three points because it's plus six, minus three. Whereas over here, this would be nine points. Then you look at animals in your goal fence. Animals in your goal fence are worth six each, so that's 12. And then finally, animals in your barn. So that is worth 10 points. So this is 16 plus three, 19 points for the second player here. After you write down these scores, then you do some cleanup before you finish the last six tricks. You take all the animals in the goal fence and those are eliminated out of the game, just like if a wolf had taken them. Then all the barn animals go into the player's goal fence. After moving those in, you would play the final six tricks. Then you would do summer scoring. And summer scoring is the exact same way as spring scoring. At the end, you'll have a game kind of like this. Here's an example game here with Taylor and Table. As you can see here, Taylor got 15 in spring and then 33 in summer. However, Table got 36 in spring and then 33 in summer. And what this does is show off these last two caveats in the rules. If your summer score is double or more than your spring score, then you actually get your spring score added to your total. So instead of this being 48, you actually will double 15 and you'll get 66. So Taylor would have gotten 66 in this example. If they had gotten 18 though, that's not double and they would have just normally added and gotten 51. So it benefits you to get a lower spring score and then try to double it in summer. And why that's important for this example is there's not only a bonus, the doubling bonus, if this was 15, Taylor got the doubling bonus, there's also a penalty. If your summer score is lower than your spring score, there is a penalty where you wipe out your summer score down to zero, and you only get your spring score. So it behooves you to not go too crazy in spring. At the end, you would have actually a running total, and it's first to 100 points. So in this game, it's 66 to 36, but you would play another hand, and if Taylor had gotten 36 points in the next round, then it would end. But you play to 100 points, and after you hit that threshold, whoever has the highest points wins. So that is Peter's Two Sheepdogs, and I am a sucker for the Moncala mechanic. I grew up playing trick-taking and Moncala, so this game is very nostalgic for me. I love the fact that it, it mixes them both really well, because the cards being tokens makes it so the Moncala is really smooth. And I love that the Moncala pieces are unique. You know, the wolves are different than the other livestock animals. So it's cool because it's a twist on Moncala, and it's a twist on trick-taking. So overall, I just, I think I'm just super biased, but I love this game. And the components are so cute. I love the artwork. I love the little pig cards and the animal cards. The fences even. I love making these little fences and setting it all up. I think the game looks great. The only con is, and I've talked about this before, where Japanese games love small box sizes. And I think that's great if your game fits in a small box. I mean, with the rules and the bag and all the stuff, and then all the pieces. There's kind of a, <laughs> a bit of a bloat to this game, and the strings are popping out. It's kind of crazy. But other than that, love it. 
I love when a trick taker has moments where you want to win a trick and when you don't want to win the trick. I think it gives a nice push and pull, especially if there's only two players and there's kind of a zero-sum game going on where you want to slough off at certain times. And it's so cool here because if you win, you get to place more animals into your grasslands, which is useful for scoring and useful for kind of setting yourself up in cool ways. But you do want to lose because then you can play Mancala and put things and have a lot of control on what goes into whose pens. So it's really cool to try to play that and try to get the right number into your grasslands. I love the fact that they give you a bonus for hitting three perfect Mancalas. It's just, it's such a good rewarding feeling. I think this would be a good month in the future to have games that combine two mechanics, Mancala and trick taking here. I think when you do that, you can't have too overwhelming in each mechanic. I think the trick taking can't be too obtuse and strange that overpowers the Moncala and vice versa. And I think it's done really well. The following suit, but then the number is important, is smart, and then the Moncala is is not too bad. You're kind of just setting yourself up for combos. So I don't think one or the other is overbearing on the other, and I think it's a perfect match. I've seen some people talk about the scoring and the actions and the rules being a little bit much. There's definitely a lot of edge cases. It seems very flowcharty. But once you're in the game, I found all the actions and all those edge cases kind of make sense. It's an interesting system that, while intricate and kind of tough, I think it took me a game, kind of took a rock or, or two, you understand why they're there. And, and it does feel satisfying and makes sense and all the numbers and all like the weird scoring once you're like in the nitty gritty of the game. I feel like it, but it's totally obtuse. <laughs> I, I definitely get that. I actually think the scoring might be my favorite part. I love in a two-player game when it's kind of you know zero sum that you don't want to score too much in the first scoring session, but a lot in the second. And both of you are trying to do that. So in the first one, just like kind of like when you're playing tricks, you don't want to win at the right time and you want to win at certain times. You're also kind of sloughing off points in a way at the start. So it's really funny because you both don't want to do too well at the start, and then you want to do very well. So it's a really cool thing, like what do you hold in your hand, right? What do you try to, you try to build a really good second half hand as opposed to the first half and some interesting moments. And I just love that it's not, it's a little complicated at the start, but once you understand the scoring and how it interacts with all like the Mancala and the play of the cards, it's really cool. I love the system. So that is Peter's Two Sheepdogs. And again, I am a sucker for Moncala. So if you don't like Moncala, uh, yikes, you won't like this one. And also take all this praise with a grain of salt because I love just whipping those animals, up, mm, that sounds bad, uh, herding those animals around the farm. So if, if you don't like Moncala, you will not like this. But if that sounds interesting to you, I think trick taking part of it is very interesting though. The scoring, the push and pull at two player of when to lose, when to win, and then the scoring of losing at the start and then winning at the end is very interesting. So if that part sounds cool to you, totally check it out. So take it with a grain of salt, but here is, I think it deserves it, the seal. And thanks very much for watching.